welcome to my talk, Herding Llamas in Your Own Flat. Um, yeah, what will we talk about today? So, we will start with a short introduction, what is AR Core and what is scene form, and then we will um, take a look at different parts, what you need when you want to build your own AR app, like model import, AR calibration, object placement and creation, then shadows and animation, and there will be code in the slides, so um, you don't have to take pictures. Um, all the code is on GitHub, and there's uh, on the last slide is the link again. So, first short introduction. I'm an Android developer since Android 1.5. In 2014, I fought, uh, founded my company Smart as Apps, doing mostly freelance uh, work in app development. And I started to work with SceneForm in January 2018 as part of an early access program with one of my clients, the Otto Group. We made um, the app Your Own Augmented Reality. It was presented at Google's AR booth at the Mobile World Congress uh, this year. It was also part of different presentations at the I.O. this year. So as I already said, we will have a sample app. And what do we want to do with a sample app? So we want to be able to place llamas and fences so that the llamas don't walk through your flat too much. So no llama hairs in your bathroom, for example. Um, we want to be able to touch them and get a reaction. And yeah, the llamas should move, but they should avoid other llamas and fences. So yeah, that's the task for today. And now a short video how that will look like. So first, short calibration. Now we have um, the floor. Yeah, so somewhere we need a fence. Yeah, that might be a good spot. Yeah, a little bit of rotation, so looks good. And then we can start placing our llamas. And that's the first one going away from us. I don't know why. And the second one mm, also doesn't like us. Yeah, so that's the sample app uh, we want to create today. And first, let's start. What is this AR Core? AR Core is Google's augmented reality framework. It's the successor of Project Tango, um, but with a nice change that you don't need special hardware. So in theory, it should uh, run on almost every Android phone that is um, fast enough to handle those calculations on the device. And how it works is it fe finds features in the real world and keeps track of them so that you can um, yeah, add virtual objects to them or place information on, the, on them. And no matter how the user moves in the room or rotates or just does whatever with his phone, um, AR Core should keep track of that point. Who of you has looked at the AR Core sample app last year when it was launched? Okay, quite a few. Um, you would have noticed that there's a bit AR Core specific uh, code in there, but a lot of OpenGL uh, stuff. So the question was, should we all start uh, becoming 3D developers and start digging into OpenGL? And fortunately, we don't have to. Google released uh, this May at the I.O. scene form. It's a lightweight 3D rendering engine, which is also nicely integrated with AR Core. It does all the um, initialization for you. It um, connects the virtual world with uh, the world from AR Core. And it provides uh, an easy start for new AR projects and helps you to link everything with the renderer below scene form. So this renderer is called a physically based renderer. If you want to um, get to know more about what is a physically based renderer and what, um, what's uh, below the, the hood there, you can t uh, look at the Google I.O. talk from Romain, um, building AR apps with the SceneForm SDK. There he talks uh, in detail about what's the renderer that's uh, below SceneForm. So, but yeah. We want uh, to know how to start with our app, and we have two options for that. One is we use the AR fragment from SceneForm. That's the easy part. You get everything you need. This AR fragment, it uh, handles getting the camera permission. 
it checks whether AR Core is installed. If not, it prompts the user to download it from the Play Store, handles all the installation process for you, and it also provides some standard gesture support so that you can easily rotate, scale the objects uh, that you place in the virtual world. The other part would be AR Scene View. That's basically a surface view, one that you would also use to do usual uh, OpenGL stuff and you have to do all the AR core in it uh, on your own. So this is more uh, relatable to the kind of apps you did with the old AR core sample app. So um, when we are, um, want to start with an AR app, so there are two options. Either you build an app that's based on boxes and spheres, or you need some 3D models to make it nice. And yeah, I'm not a 3D artist, so I need to find some good models online. And yeah, Google provides us with Poly, which is a platform for getting uh, 3D models. You can just uh, search there, download the files, then you unzip them, put them in your um, project folder. and then easily import them using the scene form plugin in your Android Studio. And that basically, that's it. Um, the scene form plugin will add two new Gradle tasks to your project. And one of them creates a so-called SFA file, which is a scene form asset. That file defines how the different Files. So you have a OBJ file, which is basically the geometry. You have uh, different textures, like different PNGs, and which PNG is used for which channel, and all these uh, different informations, they are uh, stored in your SFA file. And in the second step, um, there's a tool that converts um, all these different files into one file, the SFB, a scene form bundle so that you just have to put this one in your app and SceneForm knows how to load it and how to um, show everything included. Now that you have like two new Gradle tasks for each model, you might think, okay, um, if I do like an easy sample app with two or three um, different models, that's fine. But if I want to, for example, have a web shop uh, and I want to add 500 models, that would mean I've got two, uh, I've got thousand new build uh, Gradle tasks in my build Gradle, and at least one of them is called with every build, so that might get really messy. So the uh, other option that I found is to do it with a script. Um, if you just if you take these steps and you uh, run them with minus minus info, you see that they're basically only calling one command, the long one down there. Um, but you can go from there and build your own script um, that calls these steps instead of going through adding every file manually through the scene form plugin and yeah, then your build gradle is not cluttered with um, 3,000 lines of uh, model uh, definition. Yeah, and uh, this one is creating the SFA file. But be careful when you do this. Um, the SFAs that are created are best guess. So it works well if you just have one texture and a model, then everything is fine. But if you have more complex models with different textures, uh, then it gets messy. So you will have to fine tune it on your own. Luckily for us, uh, these SFAs are a JSON-like structure. I use a Python script to basically take away what's in there and write it new in a correct order. And when you're there, you can also do some extra tasks like uh, calculating bounding boxes for your models, um, which unfortunately um, the build tool also does not do for you. So usually the bounding boxes are just a cube with um, each size, each side is one one unit long, so it doesn't really help you with most models. And yeah, 
and the build tool just takes all your textures and put them in one bundle, and you might want to downsize them on the way so that you know we are running on mobile, we have a small, uh, small screen, and you might not need these high quality textures. If you have done everything like that, then you just have to call the last, um, last command line. And that's an easy one because all the work was done to create the SFA file. Now, Sceneform knows uh, what different um, parts you want to put in that bundle, and it just creates the bundle. So now we have the model, and we want to start with placing objects in the real world. But um, of course, AR Core needs some, uh, needs some information to recognize uh, the world, to know, okay, uh, okay where are the planes, where can I put things, and um, a good start is to give it a little help, which just means to um, yeah, tell the user to move the phone so that um, the camera has different angles and AR Core can start, um, uh, yeah, start finding planes and feature points there. Luckily for us, if we use the AR fragment, um, it's just it's included. We have the possibility to um, change the view that is shown to maybe um, better give it a better fit to your brand, and it also automatically disappears as soon as a plane is detected. So how would that look like? It looks like this: you have this hand, and it usually takes really only one or two seconds. If you don't want to use the AR fragment, but you use the AR scene view, then you have to do it on your own. Um, but there's an on-update listener, which is called on every frame, and you just check if, there's, uh, if there was a plane detected that is actually in the tracking state, meaning AR core is sure that it knows where it is, and that it is upward facing, meaning we want to look for tabletops or for the floor. And as soon as you finish, one, uh, as you find one of them, you can, yeah, stop your animation. Um, for our your home app, we did something like that. The user should show us the the floor, and then he get, uh, sees some emojis he has to catch in order to uh, to find the plane. So that also was pretty fast, but much more work than just say okay. Just move your phone and you're done. So, time to free the llamas. Object placement is, again, super easy. You will just um, register an on-tap AR plane listener, and it does exactly what its name says. It gets called whenever the user taps on an AR plane. And in this case, uh, we place an object there. And how do we do that? Um, we get this hit result and we create an anchor of it. Um, who knows, uh, who already has worked with AR Core knows these anchors are the objects that specify a point in the real world that is tracked by AR Core. And however um, the user moves his phone, um, this point is fixed. And scene form adds uh, the anchor node which is basically the bridge between AR core and scene form. So you give it a node, and uh, you give it an anchor to this node, and a node is like usual in um, 3D programming, it's just a place in your 3D scene. And buying these two together, um, we can now attach uh, a llama to this. So how do we create a llama? Would be uh, interesting. So loading um, the model that we have created is just this one line, model renderable, renderable, renderable builder set source. As you can see, um, your models are placed in the resource folder, so they are handled like any other Android resource. You can also put them in the assets folder if you like, but this way you always know that the naming is right. And when it's finished, um, we just assign it. Um, scene form takes care of the whole loading. It takes care of dispatching it to a worker thread. So this 
uh, build method returns a completable future um, that we can then use to get the result of this background work. Then we create a node with this renderable. It's also just two lines of code down there. And you might wonder what is a transformation system. That's something that's um, provided by the AR fragment, and it gives you support for all the standard gestures. So we use a llama node that is um, a child, or it's a uh, subclass of a transformable node. And with transformable node, you get this scale controller, translation controller, rotation controller, which, which you can um, configure how this should work. For example, for the scale controller, you can set a minimal scale and a maximum scale so that things don't get too big or too little for your app um, to actually work with. Um, for this one, for the llama, um, we don't want to scale the llamas. They come in the size they are. We don't want to move them around because they will move on their own, and we also don't want to ro rotate them, so we just disable all of this but it's just for this kind of nodes. So for fences, they can just rotate, as you have seen in the first video. And the other part that is also uh, provided by this transformable node is the uh, on-tap method. Usually it just calls select, and select will give you this nice little um, ring around an object that shows, okay, this is the currently selected object. And all gestures are applied to this object, so if you move it or if you uh, rotate it, that's the one that will be um, changed, but we don't want that, so we just want to start a little animation uh, whenever the user taps on a llama node. So, if you um, come from something like Unity or some other more advanced um, 3D lib, you would expect that um, all objects behave like real objects. But um, unfortunately, in scene form, there's right now nothing like a good collision detection, nothing like uh, I just say, okay, this one is solid uh, equals true, and everything just works. You have to do the um, collision detection on your own, and even collision detect, okay, detection is it, but resolving is kind of hard because you don't get any information how much it is overlapped. So in a productive uh, application, you would want to do some more complex stuff to maybe um, find the overlap so that you can really resolve it and make sure that um, objects don't overlap. For us, we just push one ob object away whenever there's an overlapping. So this resolve overlap, it checks whether one object overlaps with anything else. If this overlapping node is a heart, um, then we don't care because this is just an, an animation object. It uh, doesn't matter. And otherwise, we um, take the, uh, we, we make a vector between them and move it in the other direction so that these um, don't overlap anymore. And as this is called in the node on update method, which is called in every frame, hopefully it will resolve fast enough that the user won't see any glitches. But yeah, it's not nice. You don't get like uh, bouncing like here for other engines where you just say, okay, these two objects, they are solid. They bounce when they, um, when they um, touch each other, so hopefully Google will invest some time here and give us a better collision detection. What works really nice is shadows. You can um, just enable and disable it on every renderable. You have two, two sides of the shadow. You have one is the shadow caster, mean this object casts shadows on other objects. And you have a shadow receiver, means uh, other objects receive or can cast shadows on this object. And if both um, are true for our object, the object also casts shadows on itself. So if you, for example, have, like with these llamas, they have like a, a hat, and if the lighting would be right, then the hat would um, cast a shadow on its own back. So usually that's the behavior you want. 
for any like real world object that's like the default one. And you can also say, okay, when we detect um, planes like the floor, should there be shadows casted on these planes too? That's pretty nice because it's, um, this, it's what you would um, expect that is it uh, a table top or the floor uh, objects should ca uh, cast shadows on that. So yeah, you usually want to uh, enable it, this, but then you have uh, a little problem. If you s take a look at the, uh, at the back, at the really top, it's a really straight line there. And uh, with this video, you see that it basically the shadow is only casted on parts of the plane where AR core detected it as a plane. So it will now detect more parts of the plane and so the shadows move. So in a worst case scenario, you might have just half of the shadow because the other part is uh, not recognized. So for our sample app, that's kind of okay. Uh, for real production apps, you would probably um, disable this one and add your own fake floor that is really huge so that there are no boundaries where virtual objects would uh, cut their shadows. So now we go to the animation part. And there's really nice, two nice ways. One is do it manually, meaning on every frame you just do something with your object, like um, changing its rotation or its scale, whatever you want to animate. And there's the easier part where you just use Android animations. So you can leverage your uh, knowledge from Android development here by using, yeah, so that's uh, first the animation we want to create. You tap a llama and then heart comes out, goes up, rotates while, so yeah. That's what we want to create. For the first part, for the going up and down part, we will use an object animator, like for any other Android animation. We set the values um, where it should um, animate from and where it should animate to. We say we want to um, animate the property local position, then your duration and repeat count. And then that's the part that's um, scene form specific as you set an elevator and scene form provides you with a vector three elevator, which uh, includes the logic to interpolate between different vectors. There's also another one that can be used to interpolate uh, rotations. And yeah, giving this um, tool in your hand, you can create, create a heart create an animator and say just animator start and it just goes up and down like you would expect. You can also set uh, the usual interpolators on it like you want to have an overshot or you want to have accelerate, decelerate, uh, interpolation, everything just works like you know it for other Android um, animations. And the other part would be um, our scene form animation, that's like I said, you just call on every on update, you just change the local rotation in this, this part, you just calculate some new degree that you want to have and just set it every time this one is called. So let's look at our sample app. We want to be able to place llamas in AR, check. We want to allow touch llamas and get a reaction. We also did that. And llamas should move but avoid others, so we have collision detection that they don't overlap. So let's first do a, um, no. I think we have plenty of, we have a bit of time left, and then I can tell you something about about the tooling that we uh, got fr uh, from Google. Beside the uh, Android Studio scene form plugin, we also get uh, support for the Android emulator, which now has AR support. 
So you can change um, the back camera of an emulator to a virtual scene. This is basically, it's a, a little flat you would walk through. And um, you have two places for customization. If you want to do some um, image recognition, for example, in one room there's a big, uh, win, uh, a big picture at the wall, and you can change this picture. And there's also somewhere something on the floor where you could also like place something like a QR code or your logo that you want to recognize. And you just navigate through the scene using um, yeah, um, the WASD uh, keys, so like an ego shooter, just go through. And one downside is that right now uh, it needs a graphic chip that supports OpenGL embedded um, version with uh, version 3.1. So my early 2015 MacBook Pro does not support this, so we have to wait until they figure out how to, how to do it. Yeah, so then let's go back to the summary. Sceneform is a great start for all of us to create own AR apps. And yeah, hopefully Google will add uh, support for animated render it soon. They, um, yeah, promised it at the Google I.O. to do this so that you um, have like real walking animals uh, in, your, um, in your games and not, not everything looks that stiff and just glides around, so something more realistic. Uh, from my point of view, the documentation is a bit sparse at the moment. You have to uh, jump through different documents. You have to look at the um, Java docs um, to find out uh, why things um, behave the way they do. So hopefully this will also be improved. And yeah, so thank you for joining my talk. Um, you can find the sample app on GitHub. This is also a QR code for people who don't want to um, type in that GitHub URL. You can find my company on Twitter, you can email if you have questions about scene form or you want to start with your team or your team already started and um, is stuck somewhere. So yeah, please just um, send me an email and if somebody um, sketch noted the talk, I would also be interested in the sketch notes. So thank you. So thank you, Stephen, again. We still have five minutes uh, for Q&A. There are two microphones on the side of the stage. And if you are in the middle, stuck in the middle, I can come and give you a microphone. The guy there? OK. So do, you, do you have a good sense at this stage uh, the cutoff point between using AR Core and Scene Form? What are the sort of the capabilities that you would you could use you could develop using AR Core, but you can't using Scene Form? What what are sort of the um, you know? And do you see some of those capabilities being built out in Scene Form? Over could time? you speak a bit louder, or could we <laughs> Sorry, know, put up the, <laughs> the <laughs> microphone? Sorry, yeah, no, I think it's, it's working now. Sorry, I'll, I'll say it again. Um, do you have a good sense of sort of the cutoff point between sort of scene form and AR core? What are the sort of the capabilities, the, th the things that you could do with AR core that you can't do with scene form? You know, and do you see some of those capabilities yeah. being, being built uh, so out over time? So basically, um, scene form is just a renderer. So um, that it's a renderer that integrates nicely with AR core. So um, you can do everything that AR core can. You get um, access to all the yeah. AR core specific, like a, a frame and the AR core session, uh, everything can be accessed. So it's more like a, a nice add-on that also handles for you the AR core part. So if you just want to use, um, uh, if you do OpenGL drawing yourself, then there's no need to use scene form. C form is more for uh, lowering the barrier to start developing AR apps because you don't need all this knowledge about OpenGL. So this, is every, uh, this whole OpenGL part is hidden from you. And also like loading models and... Yeah, sorry, just, sorry, just a quick follow on. So I guess that you know, partly answers it as well. I mean, 
what do you see you know in your examples cases where you really should you need open gel and you know what what are the sort of use cases where maybe you know you start using scene form and you realize you've hit a limitation maybe you have to start using open gl code directly then at that point um, for the apps I did, I didn't have the necessarily to to open uh, to use OpenGL. Um, of course, if you want to make of this example app like a, a game or or more advanced uh, sample, you want to start with animation of the objects. That's something you would have to do in OpenGL right now, because you cannot you don't have support for for it. You don't have such advanced things like. For example, skeleton animations, something like that, and you also cannot uh, access them nicely. So you you cannot really start changing the renderable you have loaded. So that's pretty static right now. So that would be a point where you would say, okay, nice, but I cannot use scene form for this, and I'm also pretty sure that you cannot mix OpenGL and scene form. Because scene form runs on a, a dedicated uh, thread that is protected from your app, so you cannot easily access that one. So that would be a point for it. Thank you. So we still have time for one quick question. If someone of you has one. Uh, so before you say that there is very little information about the objects to implement like collision or uh, things like that, but is is there a way to have like the velocity of the uh, of the objects to implement the real physics? Yeah, uh, uh, right now you don't have like a physics engine in scene form. You don't even you don't even have gravity. So whatever you do in case of collision detection or uh, physics like gravity you would have to uh, implement on your own anyway, so then you would have all the information you need uh, to do that. But you, for example, if you want to just drop objects in the scene, you will have to um, do the animation or yeah, the, the falling part on your own. Okay, thank you. <laughs>